To start our journey, let me take us back to 1934. Here is architect Sir Giles Gilbert Scott walking through Clare College in Cambridge towards the new University Library building, which had just opened. Let's join Scott and take a closer look together at that University Library building that he designed. Hi, I'm Jess Gardner, the University Librarian for Cambridge. I'm in front of the great University Library building. It's quite imposing, isn't it, when you first come up to it? It's so tall. It's the biggest single building on the University Library estate. It was called, when King George V and Queen Mary opened it in 1934, a powerhouse for educational activities and a storehouse for seasoned wisdom. And we still are that today. Of course, it's reminiscent too of Scott's other great designs, like the Battersea Power Station in London and Bankside on the Thames, now Tate Modern. You might know that Scott also designed the red telephone box, and you can perhaps see that idea of those windows reflected here, and the tower like a great big TARDIS ready to take off. What's more surprising, perhaps, is inside there are some beautiful arts and crafts characteristics and Art Deco features, and many of those still survive a hundred years on. In this film, we're going to go and have a look at some of my favourite places in the library. Just remember that it all looks a bit different at the minute because of the safety measures to keep readers safe and library staff safe through the coronavirus. But I hope you'll look beyond that to our beautiful library. Come on in and enjoy the tour. So I'm bringing us along to the South Corridor. There are two corridors, the North and South Corridors, that run across the whole of the front of the University Library building. Let's go a little bit further in to the South Corridor. These wide walkways, so elegant, with light pouring in from the inner courtyards, were designed as the main ways in which people would walk around the building to the main reading rooms on this floor. It's also a place where you can see some of the lovely features that Scott took as characteristics from the old library in the medieval building in the centre of Cambridge, a building called the Old Schools, which is next door to King's College Chapel in the centre of Cambridge. So you can see from the ceiling this beautiful painted panelled wood ceiling and these fantastic cases, which were the original carved wooden cases that sat in the old library in the centre of Cambridge. And in 1934, these came across with all the books packed on the backs of horses and carts across the river from Cambridge to the library's new home in here, the Giles Gilbert Scott designed University Library of Cambridge. Now originally, these cases held the King's Library and the King's Library is part of one of the greatest special collections in the world held here at Cambridge. It was a gift of King George I in 1715 and it contains over 30,000 rare historic books and over 2,000 unique manuscripts. Now today, of course, those books are housed in climate-controlled, secure strong rooms in a addition to the Gilbert Scott design that came in later in the 20th century. And today they house part of the OpenStack collections, the many books, the millions held on this site, which uh, any member of the library, student or scholar or interested member of the public can browse if they're a member of the library. Displayed all down this corridor at the moment are portraits of women uh, showing students and professors and college porters and heads of college houses and vice chancellors and even one or two librarians who have been part of uh, Cambridge's history making a contribution over so many centuries. This building today is a library, an archive and an exhibition space and we run public programmes that are open to everyone. Our last exhibition was called The Rising Tide and it featured the history of women through the centuries at Cambridge and their struggle for education equality. The two portraits behind me are two of my favourites. On the left, this beautiful painting by Francis Baker in 1915 of Lettuce Ramsey, 
Ramsey was a British photographer who captured, amongst many others, portraits of the Bloomsbury Group and ran a so photographic studio here in Cambridge in the 1930s. She's twinned on the wall with another favourite, Professor Dorothy Hodgkin, who won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry and was photographed in 1937 by Ramsey and by Helen Muspratt. She, like Lettuce Ramsey, studied at Newnham College here in Cambridge. Dorothy Hodgkin for a PhD and Ramsey for her degree. So here we are at the far end of the South Corridor, which brings us to this grand entrance to the Anderson Room. So this is the Anderson Room, and when the library opened in 1934, it was the Manuscripts Reading Room. And here you would have studied great works like Moore's Bede, the library's Anglo-Saxon history of the English people from the 8th century, or the handwritten notebooks of Sir Isaac Newton. Or perhaps you might have chosen to look at the library's first folio of Shakespeare or the Gutenberg Bible, treasures that we hold here at the University Library. Today, the room is shelved and full with music reference books and scores to give students of music everything they need to study and learn about their discipline when they're here at Cambridge. We're here in a room named for Sir Geoffrey Keynes. Keynes was a surgeon, a bibliophile. He was the brother of the economist Sir John Maynard Keynes and he was married to Sir Charles Darwin's granddaughter, Margaret Darwin. You can see how beautiful this room is. We're surrounded by these books and these cases, some from Keynes's own study. And it's set up to be like a scholar's study and it has that rarefied sense of an inner sanctum in the library. And today, we use it just for special occasions like this. It's one of my favourite places because you can really smell what a library feels like and feel like you're inside uh, the mind of this great book collector and his wonderful collections all around us. I've picked out just one item which I particularly love and I hope you enjoy it too. This is a novel, or the first volume of a novel, and it was actually Jane Austen's book and held within her own personal library. And it has her signature at the very front, dated for 1799. So we're at the entrance gates to the main reading room at the University Library, and these awe-inspiring, open, filigree, bronze, aluminium gates are literally a gateway to learning. They're beautiful, aren't they? And through them is one of the most spacious and quiet places for study in the University Library building. It's incredibly popular with students. Come and have a look. So here we are in the main reading room. It's so quiet in here today. And you can see that some of the changes that have been made to make sure there's a good, safe working environment for everybody, for readers and for staff. This glorious, large room with the light pouring in, designed by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott as a reading room, just as you find it today. It has that beautiful painted wooden panelling ceiling, which is a reminder of the original building in the old schools. And it has these long windows at double height so the light comes in and helps you during those long hours of study. Now at the moment it's set out for social distancing. I'm pleased to say we're open again so you can come in and book a space. But you should see it at exam time when it's packed with students before the coronavirus and the steam rising as all the thinking and the working is happening. But I hope you can see what a beautiful space it is. And even on a busy day it's hushed and quiet and a real sense of scholarship and study with very little distraction in the heart of this library. 
So we're now in our final destination of our tour and we're in one of the inner courtyards here at the University Library. These lovely spaces are designed by Scott to let light into the building around us for those reading and studying, but also an opportunity for all of us to come out and get a breath of fresh air and a place to be still to contemplate between all those hours of study. It's also a fantastic place to see that 17-storey tower behind us. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about that. The legend is that it's full of pornography. That's what the students like to tell us anyway. The truth is less salacious, but still, I hope, quite fun. Scott designed the tower as a book stack, and the 10 upper floors are densely shelved, book after book after book, with lots of the popular titles, popular culture, popular fiction, from the 19th century through to the mid 20th century. These books, all with their original dust jackets on, so you get this snapshot in time because the books are shelved by date and also by size. So by the time you get to the top floor, you get the smallest books, some just one or two inches high. And this is part of the library's legal deposit collection. And you might know that better in terms of our status at Cambridge as a copyright library. That means since 1710, we've been entitled to receive a copy of every book published in the UK. And together with our partners in legal deposit, at five other legal deposit libraries of the UK and Ireland, we're responsible for the National Published Collection, which helps to preserve this material, not just for this generation, but for all the generations to come. Today, we still receive over a mile of printed books through legal deposit each year. Imagine all those books coming through our door that have to be shelved somewhere. That's why we had to build our new store out at Ely. But since 2013, much of the legal deposit comes in electronic format, and so we have tens and millions of digital items alongside the printed legal deposit, which you can use and help together to make us one of the greatest libraries for research in the world. So we're nearly at the end of our tour, and there's just one thing I really wanted to talk to you about before we finish, and that's that this university library is here for everyone. Of course, we're here for current staff and students and alumni of the University of Cambridge. But did you know if you're 16 to 18, you can apply for a reader's ticket? Or if you're a writer, a historian, researching something in your own past, or just love books like me, then you too can apply for a reader's ticket for Cambridge University Library. There's a small annual fee for the whole year round. Or if you just need a few days, then there's a free pass you can apply for. Just give us a little bit longer in our recovery from the coronavirus and then get in touch and we'll tell you more. We'd love to welcome you through our doors to Cambridge University Library.